tell me about um, the Grinch. Tell me about how the Grinch stole Christmas and your role as young Max, which this is not your first time playing young Max either, is it? No. So this is uh, my third time doing the Grinch. The first time was um, I played Sinulu. Um, and then the second time, which was last year, I got to play Max for the first time. And this is my returning as Max. And I absolutely love this role. It's such a joy to play. Um, all of the kids, they absolutely love a puppy and I love making kids laugh and stuff. So yeah, I love this role. I'm so happy to be back. It's it's great. We were in attendance last year. We were also there in 2018. So we've seen you in both <laughs> of those roles. Um, our family, we have two young boys and we, oh, we, love, we love going to the children's theater. We love the Grinch. Um, what's it like playing a role that you've played already before? I mean, is it like riding a bike and you just pick it up where you left it off or do you build upon that for mm -hmm. your uh, return uh, performance? Yeah, I think it's very different because I think every time you um, return to a show, you try to make it a little bit better than last time. So it, there's definitely muscle memory. Like I could just get right into the lines. I didn't really have to look at the script. Um, me and Reed, are, we have a really good partnership. So I like trust him completely. And we know like when we breathe and um, we can like feel each other out really well. Um, but yeah, there's, def there's definitely a few changes this year. Um, that I have to kind of remind myself. It's not the same as last year, so I have to, um, yeah, remind myself that I need to make different choices this year and um, different motivations and scenes. And, um, but yeah, it's definitely like riding a bike. You know, there's, um, it's definitely just like, I jumped right back in and it, I was <laughs> off going, off running. You, you mentioned Reed, who plays the Grinch. He's also yeah. done that a handful of times. Uh, what's it like getting back together to do a show you've done before? Uh, you mentioned doing a role you've done before, but with the people you've done it before. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was the um, biggest reason I wanted to come back was um, because of my, I have such a good um, partnership with Reed. He is one of the funniest people I know. Uh, we like to get on each other's nerves, but last year it was so fun. We got so close and we just like picked up on each other's habits. So we knew exactly what the other person needed. Um, and I, I strived to find that relationship in every single role I've done. And with Reed, it's very easy um, to feel connected to someone. So of course that was like, when they asked me to come back, of course I said, yes, of course. I, um, and if, if Reed was doing it, then so was I. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was so fun. Of course, Adam Qualls is also um, the Grinch's understudy and he will be going in once a week, which is awesome. So I also get to um, have a new perspective on the Grinch, which is fun too. Um, but Reed is my absolute favorite, and I think we get along very well. It's fun to perform with him. Yeah, you, you've talked about kind of bringing these characters to life, a beloved children's story. There's multiple movies, multiple uh, versions of it. Um, how do you you put your own twist kind of on the character that you're playing compared to, and not really get sucked into, well, this is how they did it in the cartoon, and this yeah. is how they did it in a live action movie? Mm -hmm. I think I grew up on um, the live action movie for my um, whole life, actually. And it's it's nice. I think it's easy to kind of create my own version of it because the dog is played by an actual dog. <laughs> and right. it doesn't have human lines. Like, you can't really copy the way it talks or something. Um, but honestly, um, Peter Brocious, our wonderful director, he just told me to look at my dogs and... Um, kind of pick up on what they do and I think that's what I've been trying to do um so it's definitely it's you know bringing the joy to it bringing the fun to it bringing the um puppy like self to it um but I think I this role has come pr pretty easy to me it's very happy and optimistic and it's so um you're just hoping that the dog will um save Christmas in the end so that's such a fun role to play and it's I actually think it's um, one of my favorite roles yeah. talk to me a little bit more about that um, Max specifically yeah. young Max is kind of a meek character um, mm. 
and but a very important character as far as the story goes and the, the juxtaposition specifically with reed playing the grinch and right. he's stomping all over the theater and out into the crowd and doing all these things um but it's a very important and delicate juxtaposition mm -hmm. with your role to play that other side of the relationship and if we go through the story you know the you know back to the cartoon the heart grows three yeah. sizes all these things that's a a, a focal point of your role in yeah totally i mean it's definitely i think it's hilarious watching this grumpy old man just be like <laughs> like jumped on by this puppy dog this whole time um it, it the grinch has this big um um has this big role in the show where he's the mean old Grinch, but he still has this puppy dog that follows him around. He's the um, Grinch. The Grinch is the only owner Max has ever known. Um, and he, and when dogs love someone, they love them fully. Um, and so I think it's just, um, I had a point, I promise. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah, Max is just so lovable and just so like happy and joyful and optimistic all the time. And seeing that in comparison with Wraith's portrayal of the Grinch, it's I think it's absolutely hilarious. And also when you see the transition between puppy and dog at the end for the dog finally standing up for himself and finally putting his foot down and saying, yes, you are the Grinch, you are mean and you are cruel um i think that's i think it's so powerful and i love how our our production does it where it's very much like putting a stop to something and putting your fist down perfect what what's your favorite part the children's theater actual physical theater is good size but it's intimate like yes. you're, you're right there the stage is right there you really get to see the reaction of children coming to, to witness this how, how does how do you interact with the crowd and how does that make you feel seeing all yeah. these people out there just loving on what's happening? I think a big thing that um, audiences don't really understand is that we can fully see everyone <laughs> in the theater. So um, there's been many funny moments where I'll be looking on the audience and someone will do like a certain reaction. Um, to something Reed has said or something I've said. And it cracks me up every time because everyone has, um, <laughs> there's everyone has a certain face they're doing when they're trying to figure something out. Um, and I think it's funny, but the kids, the kids are so fun when Grinch comes out of the audience and, and Grinch inter interacts with the kids or when I interact with the kids, um, they had the joy on their faces are, is so um, yeah. fulfilling and so lovely. Um, but I, yeah, I think my favorite part of the show is when um, at the end, the Grinch is trying to say Merry Christmas to all the Who's. And Reed does this beautifully where he's really trying to say it, but he can't. And then all of a sudden, everything will be quiet. And all of a sudden you'll hear a kid go, say Christmas, you have to say <laughs> Christmas. Um, because <laughs> they don't fully understand what's going on, but they're, I think it's, I think it's absolutely hilarious. And I broke on stage several times when it I was just going to ask you that. It's, it's part of the joy of having an audience that's yeah. with kids, but does it ever like take you out of the moment? And, it, does, it does. And I try so hard not to, I mean, that's the biggest thing with like theater, like you're trying to tell a story. Um, and I, f I have a hard time staying in character when something happens, um, especially when they're kids. I mean, they, the innocence of them, they just immediately say what's on their mind, which is awesome. Um, but when you're trying to tell a story, it's kind of hard to stay in the show when a kid's screaming at you to say <laughs> a certain line or something. But For yeah, sure. it's so worth it. Even if you giggle a little bit, you can jump right back into it. Right. You can definitely have fun with it. I think I saw in my notes, you're in 11th grade. Is that correct? I'm in 11th grade, yeah. And you've been acting and performing for a while now. How did you get into uh, performing arts? And what was your, like, what was the impetus to say, okay, I like this, I have fun with this, but I actually want to do this? Yeah. Um, I think I've always grown up with theater. My parents are very theatrical. I've been, I grew up with, I grew up watching Wicked in the house, listening to Wicked. Um, listening to Stephen Songtime, all of these like great musicians um, and performers. 
And um, I think my first moment of being, oh, I really want to do this was, um, I think it was my 10th or 11th birthday. And my parents snuck me, well, they didn't sneak me in, but it was the age limit was 12. And I, I knew I was below that. But so we kind of snuck into Wicked. Um, and it was just the most wonderful experience ever. Just this woman like belting her heart out. Um, and this woman that was supposed to be different green and like wear dark clothes and um, acts a bit different, falling in love with a character. Um, it really hit me because um, it was just something I like needed to do. Like it wasn't even like, oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, I need to do this and I need to um, be exactly like that person. Also being Asian in theater, being looking a little different than normal. Um, I think Elphaba, seeing her on stage was very um, significant to me, being like, oh, that's someone who looks different than everyone else, but she's falling in love on stage. She's overcoming something on stage. She's belting her heart out. She's making friends. I think it's, um, that was very, yeah, very significant to me. So that was the moment I was like, oh, I need to do this. Um, I need to make people laugh. I need to sing out in front of people so yeah i think that was the main point where i was like i need to do this some way somehow that's wonderful i am realizing that i might have to read the fine print a little closer because we maybe then snuck our eight-year-old <laughs> earlier, earlier this uh spring into uh see les mis which oh know, my gosh you saw that the touring little... company oh, that was so i was full sobbing in yeah it was it was so good he loved it i mean obviously there's some and themes that go over his head. Yeah. But, um, it's fun to see, um, you, you don't know this yet, but someday maybe you will, to see as a parent through your kid's eyes, the mm -hmm. magic of theater. And yeah. he's been to Wicked and he's been to Frozen and he's been yeah. to people of, of, uh, of, of performances and, and he's loving it. So to see that there and to hear you kind of talk about how that moves you in, in a different ways is, is, is fun and, yeah. and exciting just to see that next generation kind of growing up and seeing you do this as well. Um, I'll let, one more question for you and I'll let you go. Um, you mentioned earlier Peter Brocious. Yes. Um, this coming June, a little less than a year from now, he's retiring after 27 years. No. Um, he's done a handful of Grinches. You've worked with him in the past and again this time around. Um, tell me you know, the impact that he's had on you as a performer, on you on stage, and then uh, just, you know, obviously it'll be a, a big void, but the legacy. Let's call it the yeah. legacy that he's going to leave behind. Oh, goodness. This is um, a hard question. He, honestly, honestly, he was probably the first director that I fully worked with. Um, and he has made such a big impact on my life and where I am today successfully. Um, he has, he's taught, he's basically taught me most of what I know now. Um, he is absolutely like the, one of the biggest mentors I've ever had. I look up to him so much. Um, yeah. How long have I been working? I worked with him for five years now, I think. Yeah, I think that's how 2018, yeah. Yeah, going on five years or six years or something. Um, he, I don't even, I don't know where to start. He is just such a joy to work with. Um, he makes like rehearsals so fun, so fun. Um, and he makes everything like play. He makes um, hard scenes enjoyable. Um, but yeah, he is really, he's given me so many opportunities. Um, the trust he has in me is crazy and I cannot be more thankful for, to him. Um, yeah, he's one of the biggest mentors in my life. And yeah, um, yeah I, I honestly would not be where I am without him. That's awesome. And I use the word legacy um, intentionally because my uncle who, you know, probably close to 27 years ago, um, was on stage at the Children's Theater for Strega Nona. There's pictures of it in the hallway. And like, this was Peter Brochus. I mean, he's been there that had that many impact, that impact that long on so many 
performers coming through and so many people in the audience. Mm. So it's a, it's a really cool thing. Um, Audrey, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you we're so looking forward. We're going to be out there for one of the opening weekend performances. Yay! We'll try not to distract you from the audience. <laughs> um, thank you. 